I hold up, praise the Lord. Great joy, happiness to be with you tonight and to deliver to you the wonders of God's grace. That grace will accomplish something in your life. Something miraculous. Something wonderful. Something unforgettable. Are you ready? Heaven is ready for you. Father, we bless your name tonight. Glorify you. Great God. Wonderful God. Compassionate God. Loving God. Merciful God. We're praying tonight that everyone here, everyone there at the Alpha location, online, everywhere, manifest yourself in Jesus' name. Amen. And give somebody, give everyone unforgettable miracles on the, in the inner man and in the outward life. Confirm your word in every life tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. It is done. Shout, it is done. In Jesus' name we pray. God has blessed you. You can sit down. As you come to the GCK of this month, September 2024. We're considering the wonders, the marvels of God's grace. God's grace manifested on the cross. God's grace manifested at Calvary. God's grace manifested from that time, even before, and from generation to generation. And coming to our time, that grace multiplied grace. Marvelous grace, great grace, unforgettable grace will be manifested in your life. Every night, we'll be looking at different aspects of that grace of God, deeper than the ocean, wider than the widest sea, higher than the heavens. We'll be considering all those areas and your life will be blessed through and through in Jesus' name. Tonight, we're looking at the unique and universal intervention of grace through faith. The unique intervention the universal intervention of the grace of God, which comes through faith. As we look at those two words, grace and faith, those two words are joined together. Those two virtues are joined together. And what God has joined together, we cannot separate the unique and universal intervention of grace through faith. Look at First Timothy chapter 1, chapter 1. And look at verse 14. It says, And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith. Look at that. The grace of our Lord was exceedingly abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. You'll see that the Holy Spirit are joined together, the grace and the faith. And here Paul the Apostle said, that grace of God, that grace from heaven, that grace manifested in the love of God, in the compassion of God, in faith, it's manifested through faith, just like by grace are you saved 
through faith, they are joined together in the hand of God from heaven that provides the grace and it is the heart of man on earth that manifests the faith. Grace coming from above and faith meeting that grace to receive and then the coming together of grace and faith will produce marvelous things in your life. Tonight, I said tonight, yeah. it will happen in your life in Jesus' name. Yeah. Look at verse 15. In verse 15, it says, This is a faithful saying. Not was, not will be, even today. Even at this time, even in your life tonight, even in our generation, it says this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. To save sinners. And then Paul the Apostle said, of whom I am chief. You see, we shouldn't uh, misunderstand when the Holy Spirit points at you using my finger, of course. Because you can't see his finger, but you can see my finger. When I point to you, it's not me, it's the Holy Ghost pointing at you that you are a sinner. No offense, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And even Paul, the apostle, having received the grace of God by faith, he said, I am the chief of sinners, and yet that grace came to me. You are there tonight, the grace will come to you. Love will come to you. Compassion and mercy will come to you tonight in Jesus' name. But, 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 you must identify yourself like Paul identified himself. And he said, yes, I remember. I look at my past, I look at my life, and I look at what happened before I met Christ. I am the chief of sinners. And when you identify yourself like that tonight, the grace of God will pour into your life. He gives because it's compassionate. We receive because we're corrupt. Well, the common people, and by faith, we receive what the grace of God shows now, pours down upon us. Look at verse 16. In verse 16, how be it for this reason, for this purpose, for this cause, I obtained mercy. That in me, first, Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should believe hereafter on me, on him to life everlasting. Life comes to you tonight. Everlasting life, eternal life comes to you tonight the life of christ the life of god the life of righteousness that replaces the life of sinfulness we have been carrying all our lives a new life i said a new life is coming to you today life everlasting remember the unique intervention of the grace of God. Remember the universal intervention of the grace of God coming to you, coming to me, coming to all through faith in Christ. We're looking at one, two, three, four, five. Why? Because grace has five letters. Why? Because faith has five letters. And we're connecting the grace with the faith. The G of grace with the F of faith. And the R of grace with the A of faith. And the A of 
grace with the eye of faith. And then the C of grace will link that with the T in faith and the E in grace will link that with the H of faith. And so we're connecting letter to letter the word grace with the word faith. And as you make the connection in your life, grace will not preach in your life tonight. Grace will not preach in your family tonight. And grace will unburden you. Take away every negative thing in your life and the faith that receives will perfect the operation of the grace of God in your life tonight in Jesus name. Somebody say amen. Number one, we're looking at the greatness of his faithfulness. The greatness of his faithfulness. It tells us in Isaiah chapter 40. I'm reading from verse 28. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28. As thou not known, if you have not known tonight, you will know. If you have not received tonight, you will receive. If you have not understood the unique grace of God, the universal grace of God, here is your day that that unique and universal grace will penetrate into your life in Jesus' name. Has thou not known? Has thou not heard that the everlasting God the Lord, the creator of the head of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is he weary. There is no understanding, there is no searching of his understanding. Look at verse 29. In verse 29, it says, He giveth power to the faint. If you are fainting, you are down, you are weak. You're sick, you are completely down. Tonight, you will get up. Because he, the God of heaven, he, the creator of the whole universe, he giveth power to the faith and to them that have no might increases strength. Look at Vastati. In Vastati, it says, Even the youth shall faint and be weary. And it says, The young men shall utterly fall. But Vastati 1, it says, They that wait upon the Lord. Who are those people? They that wait upon the Lord. I said, who are they? They are the people coming for that unique grace. They are the people coming from that universal grace. They are the people who want a change, a transformation, a turning around. It says, they that wait upon the Lord shall reveal their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. That's you. I said that's you. They shall walk and they shall not faint. Why? Because our God is faithful. He's faithful to his word. And not only that, he's faithful to Christ. He sent Christ, his only begotten son, into this world. And he said, you go bear the punishment of their sin, the pressure of their sin, the pain of their sin. If you do that for the world, I will save whosoever will call on me through your name. And God the Father is faithful to his only begotten son. And he's faithful to us sinners. Because he said, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord 
will be saved. And because he uttered that word, and he uttered that word to everyone here in Ahoda, everyone here in River State, everyone here in Nigeria, everyone here all over the world, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, remember that, whosoever, and he is faithful to the whosoever, that whosoever will believe on the Lord Jesus Christ will not perish. You will not perish. I will not perish, but have everlasting life. He's faithful to his word. He's faithful to his son. He's faithful to the sinner anywhere, everywhere in the world. And because of that, we can taste and partake of the greatness of his faithfulness. Even today, you'll be a partaker. I go to number two here. Number two is the redemption from all abominations. You see, lives are filled with abominable acts, abominable practice, abominable action, abominable behavior, abominable. Something abominable is something unaccepted to God, something irritating to God, something punishable by God. And all those abominations, grace provides freedom, forgiveness from all the abominable things, abominable acts, abominable actions, abominable habits we have manifested is the grace of God that provides redemption, the grace of God that provides reconciliation between the holy God and the abominable man. He provides redemption. That's grace. And then it's through faith we receive that. You are going to receive tonight. I will receive tonight. Now, before I come to that redemption, let me show you something in Luke chapter 16. Reading from verse 15. Because when we say abomination, you might say, well, preacher, tell them. Preach to them. They need to be free from those abominations because you don't understand you also you are abominable in the sight of the Lord you see them pastor tell them talk to them we've been wanting them to leave all their abominations and thank God you have come tell them no I'm telling you what am I telling I said what am I telling let me read the words of Jesus to you. In Luke chapter 16, verse 15, it says, And he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves. I go to church. Ye are they which justify yourself. I am baptized as an infant. Ye are they which justify yourself. I have how many Bibles at home? One, two, three, and two small ones, the pocket one, and the one on my phone. Bible, Bibles everywhere. Ye are they which justify yourself. You know, I give money to the beggars. I, I just have that milk of human compassion. Anyone I see having a need, I give, I give. Ye are they. We justify yourself. I take the holy communion. Ye are they. We justify yourself. Then Christ continues to say that you justify yourself before men, but God knoweth your hearts. Is the problem of the heart. Is the pollution in the heart. Is the corruption in the heart. Is the wrong thought in the heart. Is the wrong direction in the heart. It says God knows your heart. Look at this. For that which is 
highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. The things that people might even praise you for. Your daddy, your mommy might praise you for. You are that clever that you can steal that thing and nobody discovers you. And your parents might even congratulate you. You are able to do this and able to do that. And you manifest corruption. You manifest traditional violence. You manifest the cultural values of your community. But they hurt people. They injure people. And you manifest what people have sent you to do. And when you do that, it produces something painful, hurting other people. Although the world may praise you, although you may praise yourself, because you know, I'm so clever, I can do that, and nobody discovers. Yeah, they will justify yourselves before me. But God knows your heart. Then it says, for that which is highly, highly, highly and greatly esteemed, among men, they are abominations before God in the sight of God. But thank God, all the abominations, the Lord will deliver us today. Amen. I hold that. Amen. Amen. Now look at Psalm 130. In Psalm 130, we're looking at verse 7. It tells us in Psalm 130, verse 7, let Israel hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy. There's mercy for you today. If I'm talking to you, raise up your hand there. <laughs> mercy for you today. My daughter, my daughter, my son there, my brother, my sister there, you need mercy too. Mercy for you today in Jesus' name. With the Lord. But on mark iniquity. If the Lord, but on mark abomination. If the Lord, but on mark all the evil things, all the sinful things. If the Lord, what on mark all the abominable things you have said, you have thought, you have done, you have practiced, who will stand? But we well, thank God for his mercy. That mercy will come to you tonight. And then it says, and with him is plenteous redemption. Plenteous redemption for you today. Plenteous redemption for everyone today. The redemption that cancels your sin. The redemption that forgives your sin. The redemption that sets you free from the power of that sin. The redemption that turns your life around so that you go in the right direction from tonight. Plenteous redemption for you in Jesus' name. Uh, look at verse 8. In verse 8, and he shall redeem Israel from all his iniquities. How many iniquities? How many sins? How many transgressions? Tonight, he will forgive you. Tonight, he will set you free. Tonight, he will take all those iniquities away from you and take you away from those iniquities. Somebody shout, Amen! Redemption from all abominations. Let's come to number three now. Number three, abandonment of all iniquity. Now, if the Lord is going to redeem us, we must not cleave to that iniquity or to that sin. If the Lord is going to set us free, look at, um, you know, a goat that is tied to the pole. And somebody comes to untie the pole, to untie the rope, and to set the goat free. And the goat is kicking and kicking and disturbing the person that is going to set the goat free. So the person decides the goat is enjoying his bondage. There are many people in life, they're like that goat. They enjoy their bondage. They enjoy their drunkenness. 
They enjoy their covetousness. They enjoy their fighting. They enjoy their evil. They enjoy their fornication. They enjoy their adultery. They enjoy all the evil things they're doing. And while the Lord wants to redeem them from all iniquity, they're kicking and rejecting and fighting and pushing the Redeemer away. They walk against themselves. They deny the Redeemer the opportunity to redeem them from all iniquity but when you abandon all iniquity and you say i've been waiting for the redeemer a long time this bad habit this abomination this sinfulness and this besetting sin how long now have i fasted how long have i prayed how long have I punished myself that if I tell any lie anymore, I'll slap myself, I'll give myself a dirty slap. How many times have you done that and punished yourself and yet you still do it again? But the Lord is here tonight. For you. For who? And what you cannot do by yourself, the Lord has come tonight and it will deliver you in Jesus' name. Yeah. Yet there is the abandonment of all iniquity. You don't pick and choose, okay? I drop that, I hold on to that, I jettison that, but I enjoy this everything. No. You're not going to pick and choose and select because you have to come to the Lord and repent and turn away from all iniquity. You abandon them. I abandon them. Say it, say it, say it. I abandon them. God will know when you abandon them. Satan will know. If you truly abandon them, your conscience will know. If you truly abandon them, because the redemption cannot come. And grace cannot operate without that abandonment of all iniquity. In Job chapter 22, reading from verse 21. Job chapter 22. Reading from verse 21, acquaint now thyself with him and be at peace. Thereby good shall come unto thee. Amen. Amen. Tonight, good will come unto you. Amen. Grace will come unto you. In verse 22, verse 22, it says, Receive, I pray thee, the law. The word, the instruction, the commandment from his mouth. And lay his word, lay, lay up his words in thine heart. Look at verse 23. In verse 23, it says, If thou return to the Almighty. It's not talking of returning to church, returning to religion. Returning to self-righteousness. I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. No, you are not good in the sight of heaven. You return to the Almighty. If thou return to the Almighty, thou shall be built up. Your life tonight will be built up. Yeah. That life that is collapsed. No principle in your life. Principles all collapsed. That life that is collapsed. Conviction is collapsed. You live without any steady, stable, solid conviction. Compromise has taken over your life. The flesh has taken over your life. And when your life is taken over by the flesh, by the world, by the devil, your life is broken down. But tonight, there's a building up. I didn't hear your amen very well. 
It will build up your life. It will build up your character. Look, in the condition in which we live in the world and here in our land, in a condition in which we live, the lives of people, they're just drifting here and there. You cannot predict them. In the past, we used to predict people. No, he cannot do that. Take him to court. Call me as a witness. I know him. And I know him. He cannot do that. We cannot vouch for many people today. They have no conviction. They have no commitment. Their lives are totally broken down. And if you try and you say, I know him. When they check up the facts, they'll say, look at this now. Oh, you say, I'm sorry. The fellow is not as I thought. Call him any name. Give him any of his title in the church. You cannot vouch for religious people anymore. I'm talking about all the churches, Pentecostal or Evangelical. You cannot defend them. How many people do we read? He is a pastor, he is a preacher, he impregnated and raped a girl, a minor in his church. You cannot defend anybody. Lives are broken down, but the Lord will build up your life. I said you'll build up your life. You return to the Almighty. It says thou shall be built up. Thou shall put away iniquity from thy tabernacles. You have to put them away. You have to confess them, forsake them, and say, Lord, by your grace, only by grace, I turn away from that. And forever and ever, I will not touch that again. I will not smell that again. I will not smoke that again. I will not drink that again. I will not worship idols anymore. I give myself completely unto you. You put them away and the Lord will hear your prayer. Tonight, salvation has come. Tonight, your freedom has now come. Look at Proverbs chapter 28. We're reading from verse 9. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 9. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, hearing the instruction, hearing the commandment, hearing the ways of the Lord. Even his prayer shall be abomination. But look at verse 13. In verse 13, it says, He that covereth his sins, tell me, shall not prosper. How do we cover our sins? Number one, the preachers cover sins. They don't talk about our sins anymore. They don't talk about the sins of their congregations anymore. All we hear now, God is good. It's always been good. But even in his goodness, he drowned the people that lived at the time of Noah. God is good. That's all we're, we're hearing now. But in his goodness, Sodom and Gomorrah perished. God is good. He brought punishment on Achan, on Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. Yes, it's good. But you understand, God is also holy. And his goodness will never contradict his holiness. His goodness will never contradict his demands. He wants us to live a life that shows honor, reverence for the death of Jesus Christ in the minutest way. He doesn't excuse the little sins. He doesn't uh, overlook the common sins. He doesn't overlook, you know, his God is good. Yes, he's good, but he's holy. And it's not a sugar daddy. Just give and give and give and not demand a new life. We must abandon iniquity. That's why it says, he that covereth a sin. The pastors cover sin. Friends cover sin for their friends. 
uh -uh. Why did you do, do that? If I report you now to the authorities, you could be jailed. But because you are my friend, I cover it for you. But you know, that covering will not prosper because on the final day, everyone will give account of himself unto God. Individuals cover their sins. They love the praise of men more than the paradise of heaven. And so, because now, if I let them know that this is who I am, this is what I've done, this is what I'm doing, they'll disrespect me. And I want respect above wanting heaven. I want honor, the honor and the praise of men above getting to heaven. I know, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. I'm not talking about that now. I want honor from the people for them to respect me and obey me. If they know that this is the life I'm living, they will not, you know, obey me anymore. You want obedience? Go ahead. But God knows your heart. You are covering your sin. He that covereth the sins shall not prosper. But whoso confesseth and forsaketh them. Look at those two words. They're joined together. Confesseth and forsaken. The sins shall have mercy. Mercy for you tonight. Yeah. Me. 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 Mercy for me tonight. Yeah. The mercy that brings salvation. The mercy that brings the grace of God. The mercy that brings the goodness of God to bear upon our lives. But remember, whosoever confesseth and forsaketh them. How many times have you confessed sin? Some do it every Sunday, but they don't forsake. Some do it every night. God, all throughout the day, I know I messed up there. I touched that one. I drank that one. I smoked that one. I slapped that one. I got angry. I couldn't help it. And I heard people every night confessing, but they never forsake. The mercy of God, the grace of God, the salvation of God is for the people that confess and forsake. You have the mercy of God tonight. I have the mercy of God tonight. God confirm it in your life in Jesus' name. Number four now, we're looking at conversion unto true transformation. Conversion unto true transformation. Anytime you hear about conversion, there's a change. There is a transformation. You're changing from the old to the new. And tonight... After the prayer, when you surrender yourself to Christ, when you give yourself wholeheartedly unto the Lord tonight, I will see that combustion on your face. You, you've been angry and angry and angry before. You're an angry man, an angry woman, angry boy, angry girl all through your life. You just go on carrying an angry face. You are angry at the wind blowing. You are angry at the rain falling. You are angry at the sunshine. You are angry at friends. You are angry at even your neighbors you have never met. You are just angry and angry and angry. And tonight, a transformation will come. God has heard your amen. amen. And when that transformation comes, all the anger, a person living his life in anger is not pleased with the world. He's not pleased with his neighbors. He's always finding fault. He's always criticizing. And he's always acting in a way to show I don't approve anyone, anything in my world. But when you come to the Lord and conversion has taken place and a change has happened, there's such a change, a conversion, a transformation that the anger of the past is now wearing a smiling face. And there's mercy and there's love. 
And you're not thinking of, I want, I want. They must bend down to me. They must prostrate for me. Even now that you have a change, even if they are prostrating, you use your hand and pick them up. I'm a man like you are. I'm a woman like you are. And I'm not better than you are. Grace came to me. Grace came to you. You're not looking for expensive esteem, honor. The people have to pay with their lives before they can please you. Anger is gone in Jesus' name. And look at the transformation we have. The conversion that takes place in our lives. We're looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 6, reading from verse 9. It says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Religious or righteous, unrighteousness. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? For his sake, righteous people, they are righteous on the outside, inwardly, they are unrighteous, they are sinful, they are ungodly. Don't you know that all those church people, all those religious people, all those, you know, highly esteemed people that are unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators. Whether we mentioned it or not, it's been reaching before we were born. It's been reaching before you grew up enough to commit fornication. It has been reaching even while you are committing the fornication. The word is there. After you've committed fornication and you use bold face, when anybody is looking at you, you look at them and you say, they want to talk and so what? Even while you do that, that word has been reaching. And even if I don't read it, the word is there. And God is not going to judge you by my preaching. He's going to judge you by his word. And when we appear before him on the final day, he will open his word. It's not going to, you know, check up on the, in the social media. My preaching is going to check up his word. And if you have contradicted his word, if you have lived contrary to his word, whether I mention it or not, you'll face him on that final day. It says neither fornicators nor idolaters. You might give me sin for your idol worship. You might say, my grandfather passed it on to my father. My father passed it on to me. And, um, you know, daddy does not call it idolatry. He calls it culture. Daddy does not call it idolatry. He calls it tradition. Whatever you call it, God knows what he has said. And if you don't drop the idolatry, because you say uh, it's uh, just a culture, it's just a tradition, on the final day, you will come face to face with God. And it is sure, no matter where you're coming from, it says no idolaters, no adulterers. Sometimes adultery becomes the, the in thing in some societies you know that's what everybody does and if um, you know some of us come and we say when you look on a woman to lust after her you have not tree in your heart you say pastor what kind of preaching is that if you think about that who will get to heaven true 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 if you think about that Noah, who will get into the ark, only Noah plus seven people. God is not going to change his word or change his standard for Mr. So-and-so, for Madam So-and-so. He says, idol, idol worshippers, idolaters, adulterous people, adulteresses, adulterers will not get to the kingdom of God. Why do we come here? Because we want to get to the kingdom of God. I pray you'll get to the kingdom in Jesus' name. But fornication will disqualify you. Adultery will disqualify you. 
Even people say, I didn't do the real thing. I don't want to know what the real thing. They said, I just touched her in delicate parts. That, in the sight of God, is fornication, is adultery. He wants you to be forgiven. He wants you to be free. And then he says, no, the effeminate, no abusers of themselves with mankind. In verse 10, it says, in verse 10, no thieves, no covetous, no drunkards, no revilers, no extortioners shall inherit none of them shall inherit the kingdom of God. I will inherit, I will inherit the kingdom of God. I will inherit. Say it aloud. The kingdom of God. There must be conversion. Conversion. Look at verse 11. It says, And such were some of you. But ye are now washed. It needs to wash you. It needs to cleanse you. But ye are sanctified, set apart. And but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of God. Transformation. Somebody shout, transformation. transformation. It will happen in all our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, my friend, maybe you claim to be born again. Thank God for that claim. It's not what you claim. It's what we see in your life. It's not just, I'm born again, I'm born again. Since you are born again, tell me. I have a drunkenness, you see, once in a while, you need to come back to God. Because that once in a while, drunkenness and smoking, whether you smoke the ordinary, or you smoke marijuana, or whatever, that will disqualify you from the kingdom of God. I about fornication, I about pornography, I about adultery. Mm, Pastor, <laughs> if we go that direction, many times, in your life, okay, you need to come to God. You are born again, but you are backsliding. You are born again, but you have gone back to your vomit. You have to come back to the Lord, and the Lord will transform your life tonight. Amen. 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 We're looking at the final one. That is number five, enlistment now in heaven. Enlistment now in heaven. I can tell you very clearly, God is about to write your name in the book of life. Yeah. And when he writes your name in the book of life, he'll take your name from the uh, book of licentiousness. The book of the people that give themselves license to do whatever they want. Anywhere, anytime, whoever is seeing them, whoever is not seeing them, they have given themselves the license to live in sin. But those who drop that license tonight and they say, I want life, I want liberation, I want a new life, that new life will come to you. And you will write your name in the book of life. And if you have seen that have tied you down tonight. The Lord will break that chain, that yoke of sin from your life tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. I just love a whole amen. amen. And look at Luke chapter 10, verse 17. In Luke chapter 10, verse 17, and the seventy returned again with joy. Tonight, you are returning back home with joy. Yeah. Because the Lord will heal you. Yeah. The Lord will deliver you. Yeah. The Lord will forgive you. Yeah. And the Spirit of God will bear witness in your heart. Your sins are forgiven. And therefore, you return home with the joy of salvation. Yeah. The joy of healing. Yeah. 
the joy of deliverance. Look at this. And the seven children returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. He'll give you salvation and also give you his name, especially for you. I say especially for you. That as you are saved and you have the name of Jesus anywhere you are. When the devil, when the demons, when the diseases, and when premature death wants to come in. And you say, in Jesus' name, they will flee away. Lord, even the devils, even the demons are subject unto us through thy name. Verse 18 Jesus said, and he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven, fall from the sky. All the powers of the devil, of demons tormenting you tonight, they'll fall from the sky. They'll fall into the abyss. They don't trouble your life anymore. When you come and you surrender your life to Christ and say, Now I raise up my hand in full surrender and I come unto the Lord. Tonight, demons will flee. Tonight, diseases will be healed. Tonight, all those devastations of your past life, they are cancelled in Jesus' name. Look at verse 19. In verse 19, it says, Behold, I give unto you power. Who are those people? You know, when you come to Christ and you say, I need this unique grace from you. I need this universal grace from you to wipe away all my past and then to give me a new life. And it gives you that new life. It will give you power. Amen. Give you a normal amen. amen. Power over the weakness of the past. You say, Pastor, this is my weakness. Anytime I see that colorful thing inside the bottle, I forget myself. And the thing overpowers me. Tonight, he gives you power to overcome that thing. Yeah. You say, Pastor, my, my problem is anytime I see that thing rolled together, dry leaves that they roll together with paper, and then I see another person puts that thing in the mouth and the smoke is coming from his mouth. I forget myself. It overpowers me. All the things that overpowered you in the past, it gives you power tonight to overcome. Power. I give unto you power. Then it says over all the power of the enemy. And over serpents and scorpions, you'll tread on those serpents. You'll tread on those scorpions. In the dream, you march over them. In the day, you overcome them and march over them. And over all the power of the enemy. Give me a good amen there. Sir, I didn't want you to do that. The enemy made me do it. Uh -huh. He doesn't have power over all enemies. I didn't want you to do that. The enemies of people's life and progress, they gave me this amount. And he said, I should go after them. I didn't want you to do it. My enemy made me to do it. From today, no enemy will make you to do anything. Sometimes your flesh is your enemy. And that flesh will be conquered tonight. And you won't say, it's not me. I have a good heart. I want to serve God. My flesh made me to do that. Your flesh will not make you to do anything. You'll have power over the flesh, over that enemy. I have power. Jesus gave me power. They'll give you tonight. Amen. Your life will be totally new in Jesus' name. Amen. 
And he says, over all, all, all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. That's what grace does in our lives. Grace sets us free. Free from sin. Free from sickness. Free from Satan. Now look at verse 20. In verse 20, it says, Notwithstanding, rejoice. Notwithstanding, in this, rejoice not. Don't limit your joy to my blind eyes open. Yes, they will open. But don't limit your joy to that. My body got healed, yes. Your body will get healed tonight in Jesus' name. Yeah. But don't limit your joy to that. And then he made provision for me. I have plenty of supply. Good. Don't limit your joy to that. Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are reaching where? Yeah. Tell me out aloud. Yeah. <laughs> Something. And, and you know, Jesus has not even gotten to the cross, but in view of what he will do at the cross. He already gave forgiveness. He says, son, thy sins are forgiven. And when we're forgiven, our names are written in heaven. Told that woman, he said, your sins, which are many. She was crying. She was sorrowful. She didn't love the life she lived. She was confessing with the aim of forsaking her sin. And Jesus said, your sins, which are many, are all forgiven. The name written in heaven. It has come to your turn. Yeah. I said it has come to your turn. It says, rather rejoice because your names are written in where? In heaven. If uh, you know those people still have the mind of okay, this has happened, but we are going to go back to our past life, the names will not be in heaven. That Judas is carried, going here, going there, following Jesus, but it's having link of the Pharisees. How much will you give me? His name, if it was in heaven before, was rubbed out. His name was not in heaven. Where is Judas Iscariot now? I say, where is Judas Iscariot now? Say it aloud. Where is Judas Iscariot now? He left his work. He left everything following, following, following Jesus. But he's still at link with the people who are going to crucify Christ. His name did not remain in the book of life. How about you? If your name... <clears throat> is going to remain in the book of life, you abandon all iniquity. You rely on the Redeemer that is willing to save you now, and then he'll forgive your sin tonight. Give me a good amen. Yeah. He will heal all your sicknesses tonight. Yeah. He will do the good of heaven in your life tonight, and then uh, he will write your name in the book of life. I will be there. I will be there. Enlistment now in heaven. It's bowed and eyes closed. It's bowed and eyes closed. The Lord wants to write your name in the book of life in heaven right now. He wants you to forsake sin. He wants you to forsake Satan. He wants you to forsake idols. He wants you to forsake all the traditions that make you disobey God. He wants you to abandon all the culture that makes you disobey God. God is supreme. And God is above every culture. Every tradition, 
every habit, every evil, every sin, every idolatry, and every abomination that you have done. Every evil sin that has entered into your life. And so he wants you now to come unto him. Turn your mind away. Turn your life away from all those things of the past. And say, Lord, I come unto you. Where are you? You raise up your hand if that is your decision tonight. And you say, Lord, I come. Lord, I come. And you write your name in heaven. Lord, I come. I abandon my sin. I abandon my evil. I abandon my iniquity. I abandon my secret sin, my public sin. Idolatry, gone. Adultery, gone. Fornication, gone. Drunkenness, gone. Smoking, gone. And all the things that people press me for, I abandon them because they are abominations in the sight of the Lord. Raise up your hand. I want that forgiveness. You want that unique grace of God. Raise up your hand. You want that universal grace of God. Raise up your hand. You want that free pardon that God wants to give you now. Raise up your hand. If you're raising up your hand, God bless you there. God bless you there. Online too. The Lord wants to give you a clear court conversion and salvation. Raise up that hand. If you are raising up your hand, God bless you. Stand up. We are going to pray together. You are raising up your hand. You say, Lord, I abandon the past. I come to the new life. Raise up your hand wherever you are and stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Standing up for Jesus. Standing up for his grace. Trans standing up in faith, knowing that as many as believed on him, to them he gave the privilege and the power to become the sons of God, the daughters of God too, and as many as believed on him. Where are you? You're raising up your hand, you're standing up. While you're standing up, tell the Lord, O oh Lord, I want this unique grace to come into my life. Tell him, your mercy to forgive to come into my life. Your compassion that saves a wretch like me, give me that compassion. And the transformation, that change that comes as a result of believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, grant me that forgiveness, that freedom, that newness of life. He'll give it to you. Tell him, tell him. The grace that comes not to gloss over our sins, but to set us free from sin I'll do that now you say Lord I've confessed and I forsake and I believe and it will be done in your life round of the prayer and say Lord I thank you I believe my sins are forgiven Lord I believe the condemnation is taken away Lord I believe a new life has come unto me. Tell him. And when you say that, accept that, hold on to that, and believe your name is now written in heaven. 
I'm praying for you now. Raise up that hand if you've dropped the hand. Raise it up, raise it up. Thank you, God bless you. Father, you are loving God, compassionate God, merciful God. And you are merciful to the sins and to the sinners so that as we call upon you, even the chiefest of sinners, the greatest of sinners, the vilest of sinners, your forgiveness comes to them right now. Manifest, Lord, that you need grace, that universal grace in the heart, in the life of everyone now, in Jesus' name. Let the joy of salvation, the joy of conversion, the joy of transformation come in every life now in Jesus' name. The grace now to continue living a new life, converted life, a shining bright life, and a life that has been withdrawn from sin. Give to everyone now in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray your people will go out with the joy of salvation, the joy of conversion, the joy of a new life that everybody will see, even on their faces, in their lives, in their new pattern of life, a change has taken place. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Say, thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. Keep on standing. Our counselors will come to you there. And your name is already written in heaven. And we want to write your name and do what heaven has done concerning you so that will keep you in fellowship and will keep you uh, discipled and developing in the Lord. Uh, let's take these uh, few minutes and let's have your name and your details. The Lord bless you. Also those online will be showing you, uh, you know, the number you have to send your details to. The Lord bless everyone. Amen. You are welcome to the kingdom of God. The Lord who has saved you will keep you in Jesus' name. Our counselors are by you. Provide necessary information to them so that we continue to follow you up to help you in your newfound faith. As we attend to the young converts, those of us who are there, just start thanking God because tonight the Lord is going to touch you. He is going to touch you. If you are watching online or you gave your life to Christ after the pastor's message this evening, there is a link Below your, below your player, click it and fill out the form so that we can assist you further in your new work with Christ. Also, if you are listening via radio or television and you have just given your life to Christ, send your name, your phone number, your location address via SMS or WhatsApp to plus two three four nine one five zero 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 nine two six three. I repeat plus two three four nine one five four four four. 9263. There will be a special meeting. Lunch hour with Jesus. Tomorrow, for those who have just given their lives to the Lord now, 
There's a big tent by my right hand side after the building there by 3 p.m. tomorrow. We expect you will be there because there is much to still be done in your life. There are materials we also give to you to help you in your faith. There will be a special believers' banquet for all those who gave their lives to Christ during this crusade. On Sunday, the 6th of October, 2024, in all our churches globally, more details about this will be sent to you. A pastor will be delighted to have you join this special banquet. For those who are in far location here, there is banquet on the 20, on the 16th of October, 2024, at 63 Ubie streets, a other town here. We expect you will be there so that the Lord will bless you. 3 p.m. also is the time we expect you will be there. Counselors are by you there as they attend to you. Get set for further blessing from the Lord. The Lord is going to meet all your need. He has met your spiritual need. He will also meet your physical need. He will touch you tonight. And you will never, never remain the same. By the grace of God. The blind we see tonight. The deaf we hear tonight. The lame we jump up and start leaping. They start jumping here and there. The Lord is going to do it in your life. Get ready for God's visitation. The Lord will visit you. Just continue telling whatsoever problem you have, today is your last day. Be saying bye-bye to them because you will see them no more. The Lord will take them away. Counsel us if you are finished where you are counseling, where you are attending to others. Go to other, look, uh, other side where people are still there that have not been attended to them. You wait where you are. Don't move away from the last place you attend to people because God is going to use you as the lame is there. Just give your hand to them. By God's grace, the power of God will lift them up. And they start walking. The blind, you will try to give them something to see. Then they will shout, I can see. Then you bring them out. The, the, those who are deaf, you speak to their ear. They've never heard since they became deaf. Tonight they will hear. Tonight they will hear. The Lord is going to touch everyone because of the special anointing. Every yoke will be broken in the lives of everyone in Jesus' name. Counsel us. If the location where you are, you finish there, lift up what you have there. Maybe a balloon, or you have them a flag, you raise it up to signify that you finish canceling so that the man of God will come forward to pray for us. And through the anointing tonight, every yoke will be broken. Every yoke will be broken. The yoke in your life will be broken. You will not see them again. They are leaving you tonight.
At my right hand side, if you finish, can you indicate? At the middle, at the extreme, middle. If you finish, can you indicate? At my left, le left hand side, if you finish, can you indicate, please? Thank you. I can see you waving there. What about the left hand side? My own left hand side. At my right hand side, your left hand side. Remember lunch hour with Jesus tomorrow, 3 p.m. in a large tent by my right hand side after the building there. Make sure by God's grace you are there. My right hand side, if you finish. At the middle here, at the extreme middle, if you finish. Those are the right hand side. If you finish, wave something. Okay. At the middle now. Towards the extreme back. Counselors, let's quickly round up. Attend to every convert diligently. Take their telephone number. Don't miss any digits, 11 digits. Write their names clearly in capital letters. At the back of the middle, uh, the back of the middle, okay.
those listening to us over radio, television, the telephone number displayed on the screen, you telephone it. Send necessary information to us via WhatsApp for further help. If you are true at the middle, wave your hand to me or wave whatsoever indicates you are waving your hand to me. Return the slip to your supervisor. We take it to the appropriate quarter. At the right airstream, at the back of the right hand side, please wave your hand or a piece of paper, whatsoever you are giving, to indicate. So that we know you are finished counseling. Okay, thank you very much. Let's rise up now. Let's rise up now as the man of God comes up now. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. My time has come. Healing, Healing, deliverance, Healing. redemption, yes. miracle yes. is coming your way. Yes. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on your serpents, on your sickness, and scorpion, and demons, and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing, help me shout nothing. Nothing, shout nothing, shall by any means hurt you. Every hurt will be taken away from your life. Harm, taken away from your life. Sickness, taken away from your life. Demon attack, demon oppression, everything is broken right now. Your blind eyes will see. Yeah. Your lame legs will receive strength. Yeah. We that hands will be made whole. Yeah. New life in every cell of your body. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Raise up that hand. Let the other hand on your cell. A miracle will get to you right there. Yeah. And after the final amen, check up. Those serpents as compiers are gone. Yeah. After the final amen, all the things that hurt you, harm you, you'll check up, they'll vanish away. Yeah. Joy tonight. Yeah. Jubilation tonight. Rejoicing because of the power of God in your life tonight in Jesus' name. Yeah. Raise up that hand. Your miracle is ready and you're ready for your miracle. Yeah. Father, in Jesus' name. Yeah. We know that name will never fail. That name will destroy all the works of the devil. That name will bring healing, deliverance, freedom, 
and redemption. Every part of the body tonight in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, the healing virtue of Jesus Christ will flow on everyone from the top of the head to the tip of the toe. Miracle for everyone here tonight in Jesus' name. Those blind eyes, I command you, be opened and see clearly. Deaf ears, be opened and receive your hearing clearly in Jesus' name. Dumb tongues, speak out. Ulcer, be healed. Cancer, be healed. Arthritis, be healed. Lameness, be healed. And all the pains in your joints, any part of your body, be healed in Jesus' name. Anything wrong with your blood, blood clotting or high blood pressure, sugar, and blood, whatever, be healed in Jesus' name. And I pray you cancel and destroy every work of the devil. Search everyone free. Miracle everywhere. Healing everywhere. To my right, to my left, at the back, in the middle, in the front. Healing for everyone in Jesus' name. Online everywhere. I pray that the healing virtue of Christ will flow to everyone right now in Jesus' name. Over the radio, on the television, those who are watching, Lord, I pray this will be the moment of miracle, power, demonstration, manifestation in every life in Jesus' name. Confirm it on everyone. Testimony from the left hand side there, right hand side there, testimony in the middle, in front, testimony everywhere. The joy of the Lord and the joy of healing received, deliverance received, miracle received. That joy everywhere right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Join me and thank you and thank God. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Check up yourself now. You'll find your miracle has come to you. Those blind eyes, open those blind eyes. Deaf ears, speak to them. Let them hear your lame, your paralyzed, whatever. You can now rise up and walk. I have already spoken to the Lord, and the Lord has showered his miracle healing upon you. Amen. Amen.